In the previous video, we looked at the exponential decay representation of the discount factor. It has to intersect at time equals zero. This discount factor must be equal to one because at time zero, we, we don't discount anything. We're already at present value. And then it must monotonically decline so that at time equal to infinity, this discount factor approaches zero. And the classic instance of the discount factor formula is e to the negative rt. We use e to the negative rt because it's the inverse, as we showed in the last video, of the exponential growth of an account balance that's drawing a constant rate of interest in a bank. Now I said in this video I'd show you some of the fallacies associated with using the exponential decay rate. Well, I mentioned that for very long term, even if it's not infinite, for very long term we could use this approximation. The present value of an annual stream of payments in a cash flow diagram that looks something like this going off for very long term the present value is going to be the amount of each payment divided by the discount rate using this discount factor we can ask ourselves how much would we discount something that happens very far into the future so let's take 200 years as an example what we want to know is just the discount factor. So E, well, now we have to choose a discount rate. Let's choose 4%. That's not unreasonable. It's low, uh, given our experience of the last couple of three decades. And now it's 4% per year times 200 years. So it's E to the negative 8. Ask yourself, you're going to compute this at home, Ask yourself whether this is a big number or whether this is a small number. This is the same as, let's take a numerical approximation of E. This is the same as this ratio right here. So you can plug this into your calculator. We have approximately 3 raised to the 8th power. Now it's less than 3. If we were going to be conservative, we could say 2 raised to the 8th power. This is a small number. So what happens 200 years from now doesn't count very much in net present value terms. So we could imagine a cash flow diagram that looks like this. We make some near-term sacrifice, the present day, and we begin to collect these benefits. Rather than this bond paying us right away, these benefits aren't going to show up for 200 years. So perhaps we want to uh, secure the future of our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great great grandchildren great 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 grandchildren we make this investment and it's going to begin to pay us a lot of money huge amount of money 200 years from now well it better be a huge amount of money because by the time we multiply that by e to the negative 8 whatever this amount of money here is a times e to the negative 8 is going to be fairly inconsequential relative to the sacrifice that we made now in other words, exponential discounting means that what happens in the long-term future doesn't count. Exponential discounting places most of its emphasis in the near term. And this isn't bad for financial analysis because we can't count on our financial institutions for greater than 200 years. Every several decades, there's an enormous disruption in the financial system that causes default, that causes uh, banks to, um, when I say default, I mean they renege on their payments, depositors lose their money. In a financial realm, of course, you can't count on what's going to happen 200 years from now. And so this exponential discounting in a financial sense might make sense. But there are no bonds that we purchase now and begin to pay us 200 years later. So what kind of nonsense is this hypothetical cash flow diagram that I've shown you? For extremely long-term problems, especially those problems that are non-financial, sometimes we do get this type of relationship. One of those, for example, is climate change. Now, we can detect changing climate on a time horizon of less than 200 years. It needn't be, I mean, climate change is apparent in some ways now, but 
we know that over time, climate change will get worse and worse and worse. So the question is, if we're going to take an economic perspective, what sacrifice would be, we be willing to make now to, of the benefit here is avoiding the catastrophe of global climate change that uh, causes massive extinctions, that depopulates coastal areas. So that's a pretty big benefit, but it doesn't happen until a long time into the future. So this is not a bond anymore. This is a, a relationship between the economy as we run it today, which puts CO2 out into the air, and the consequences that we want to avoid. Well, if we look at this as an economic problem and we discount the future economically, then we say, well, why should we make any sacrifice now? Future generations will be much wealthier than us. Our great, 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 great grandchildren, they'll have great technology or they'll save a lot of money or whatever they do. They'll be able to mitigate whatever the disastrous consequences are. We should pass this down to them because they will be so much better off. This is what the economic analysis says. It says, these benefits don't count much relative to these sacrifices. Now, that might sound like a selfish point of view, because we're not going to be around for these benefits. And in that sense, if we're not willing to look past our own lifetime, there is no benefit that we could imagine 200 years from now that would make our lives better today. So we call this a problem of intergenerational equity. We can't negotiate with the unborn people. We don't know how they feel about it, and we don't know what their lives are going to be like. And so we may feel justified in running our own lives without making these sacrifices because we won't feel the benefits that these sacrifices entail. The question of equity is whether that's fair to future generations that aren't able to speak for themselves about the decisions being made today they're going to have to live with. I'll show you an alternative way of looking at discounting in the next video.